grab that I had forgotten, and this is a, called a beekeeper tool in the beak community, in the apiary community. However, it's really just a molding lifter, and you can pick them up less expensively at a hardware store as a molding lifter rather than as a beekeeper tool. So one of the best things I like about this outfit that I got is it's got elastic all over it. So it snugs up tight. It also locks onto your thumbs. And then I wear my kid gloves over the top of that. And these literally are kid gloves because they're made out of kid goat hides. So they're very soft and you can manipulate your hands very easily with them. All right, so. I'm going to start by cracking it open and smoking them to calm them down. Smoking the bees gets them a little concerned and what they do is they all quickly grab a belly full of food in case they have to bail on the hive, in case the queen has to bail because of a fire. So when they get that nourishment in them, it calms them down. That's one of the thoughts behind the process. So I'll start by putting some smoke right here in the bottom. And then when I open up the lid, I'm going to smoke it there as well. So we'll take off our outer lid, which is sealed really nicely from propolis. There you can see a ring of propolis right around the edges there. But you know what? I'm actually going to go ahead and put this back on because there is one thing I wanted to do before doing this and that is to inspect for any parasites. And one of the ways you can inspect for parasites is to pull out the bottom tray if you have this sort of a, a tray. And I do see a little bit of sign of parasites, but nothing bad there so far. But on this tray that I'm gonna pull out, I'm going to look for shiny moving things, wow. That is a ton of pollen or wax. There is both pollen and wax. You can see there's like a little chunk of pollen right there. Really good stuff. This could be wax. It could be pollen as well. It looks more like it's wax. I see some ants. I do not see any Varroa mites and that's my main concern. There's a really nice bright piece of pollen right there, that yellow chunk. Yeah, all I'm seeing is ants. So I'm also seeing a lot of bee parts, <laughs> but I don't see any Varroa mites. So a Varroa mite is shiny, like some of these bee parts that we're seeing in here, but they're much smaller. They're almost like little dots, like this little dot right here. Yeah, I haven't touched this hive in a while. So see that, well, it was there and then the wind blew it away. I'm not seeing any Varroa mites in here. Yay, so I'm really pleased. The last thing I wanna do is start a new colony with Varroa mites. So I'm gonna dump that elsewhere later. Just set that aside for right now. We'll go back to popping open the whole box. And this is our inner lid and I'm gonna go ahead and pump some smoke in there. Then I'm gonna give them a little bit of time to start filling their bellies. You can see on this inner box right here that I have customized it. I actually have openings here, so when it gets really hot in the summertime, by simply sliding this lid forward, I create a gap where the bees can move in and out and heat can escape. And if I want it closed so that the bees can't get out, like in the winter time, I slide it to the back. So this actually allows a little bit of a gap in here that bees can get in and out of. I don't know if they make lids like this. I customize this to add those two little openings there. So I'm gonna go ahead and smoke it again from the bottom. Wanna keep these guys as calm as possible. And I say, guys, 
I really mean girls, because <laughs> there's maybe only about five to ten guys in this whole colony. All our workers in the Queen are, of course, females. It doesn't take a lot of smoke. They, you know, a couple of them smell some smoke and they immediately message everybody else. And so it's kind of like a chain reaction. Keep that if we need it here. Here. And once again, my helper has not only good cameraman skills, but he's got the tool I need in his hand. Okay. So that's our top. Got some honey up on top. That's where it's supposed to be. Lots of propolis all around the side. That's how they seal up their colony. It looks like they've created a whole set of cells right along this side here. I'll just set this off to the side for right now. Set up another table over here. I'll put things on. Bees should remain calm. Give it a little bit more smoke. And I am going to now I kind of wanted thought I had a gap here on the side but I don't really this is what I'm going to try to remove and I'm doing it as carefully as possible so I don't harm any of my hard workers A couple of them got a little excited. Hey, this is actually really heavy and really laden. She's mad at me. <laughs> That's why it's good to have this safety stuff on. Yeah, this could be a little challenging. It's really quite heavy, and I think there's some friction in between this and the other honey cells on this side. This could be a little messy. It was quite good. So you can see that's laden with nothing but honey. There's wow. no pollen. And I see a couple pockets of pollen, but not many. This is just laid, loaded with honey. Wow. So that's going to be the new hives honey supply. So because that one is so wide, I'm just gonna go with that one. This right here is a feeder, and it's an in-hive feeder, and Marshall can add some sugary solution to this. You can even add sugary solutions that have vitamins if you purchase it, but you can make your own sugar solution to help this colony get, get a good start. Uh, for right now, this is enough honey for them to get going. So I'm not gonna do anything else with this. I'm going to leave this open for right now because I'm actually going to want to take all this off the side here uh, so that I can, I can get two cells in here instead of having them form one. This is what happens when you have, when you're short one cell. So there's little gaps that I can close up in here. I'm not going to do that today. That's not the project for today. So what I'm actually going to do is go ahead and put our inner lid back on top of that. I'm going to do it nice and slow. Giving them all the time to get out of the way. You just keep lowering it down, tease them, tease them. Come on, girls, let's get back inside. And if they don't move, a couple of them are going to get squished. Of course, they don't know that, so go nice and slow. I'm getting hit by a couple of bees now. They're a little upset. I can get this thing to smoke again. Yeah, there's a couple of girls in there. I can tell they're... Come on, girls. Get out of the way. There we go. Now it's down. Okay, now I'm going to separate this and I'm going to go inside the main hive where the brood is.
this is why it's good to do regular inspections because right now this is so well sealed because I haven't done any inspections in such a long time. It's been about two months. And they've really sealed it up well with the propolis. Okay, you little ones, try to behave. All right, so I'm actually gonna move this box out of the way because that's where I'm gonna set my top box. I'm gonna to move this over to this table I've set up. I'm gonna take this top box. Hopefully it will separate the rest away from the clean excluder. So I actually think I'm going to restart this because they're really quite upset right now. Oh, it's all gone. <laughs> it completely burned up. So there's just a little bit left in the bottom of it. Got one that's really mad at me. She's right here all over me. Yeah, she's been on your back too. Yeah. At least there's okay. been one on your back. <laughs> yeah, this is normally quite a docile colony. However, they seem a little upset. It may partially be because of the wind. It may be that I haven't inspected it in so long that they're none of them have seen this before. They're all new girls. The only one that's been in there for a long time is the queen. So let's get some more smoke going, and you can see just. Look at them, they're, they're very upset right now. So, go ahead and pump some more smoke in here. You see how they all seem to just calm down a bunch when I do this? I got a nice opening in the side here. All right. Don't seem to be calming down, do they? Okay, so it is separated from the queen excluder. Hopefully the queen excluder stays down. This box is gonna be quite heavy because it is laden with honey. Wow, I have never seen that before. That is the largest amount of dead bees I have ever seen in my life. So let me grab the snippers here. And they're on top of the queen extruder? Yeah, they're on top of the queen excluder. So I don't know exactly why that's happened. But I'm just gonna take the queen excluder off. You can get these in metal. Or, wow. I bet you there's some countries where they'd enjoy that as a snack. <laughs> That's incredible. So I'm just going to set that off to the side. Now my main goal here is to not harm the queen. I don't want to hurt any of the girls whatsoever. But I certainly don't want to hurt the queen. I don't want any of this ending up inside. Okay, so... I'm going to pull out two of these. The wind's going to be picked up. Yeah, for some reason the wind's really decided to pick up. It was so calm when I was walking almost, over. Almost as if... Wow. I mean, the smoke won't even go into where I want it to go. It's blowing all over the place. All right. Well... Go ahead and do this. Come on, 
go. Come around the way. You want to move nice and slowly. Keep the bees calm. Keep yourself calm. This is such a good solid colony. There's so much propolis on this. So much wax. It is amazing what these bees have done. Okay. Well, that's not what I wanted to see. This is nothing but honey and pollen. I've got a tool over here. It'll actually slip right onto the side of the box. Handy little deal. So I can just hang this frame on here. So this is crazy. I wonder if the queen isn't in the top. She might be in the top that she got through. Yeah, so I'm gonna go through a couple of these. Now, she might not have got through, she might have been in the top previously. Oh. In which case, the whole bottom of this is gonna be full of honey and the top is gonna to be where the larva is. Ah. <laughs> actually kind of make my... Okay, they're starting to bother me. <laughs> wow. We got nothing but pollen in this one. Well, it's a good healthy colony, so we know that also probably accounts for all those dead bees in the top. I bet you the queen's in the top. I'm gonna keep on inspecting. I'm gonna slide every one of these over and inspect until I see larva. And if I don't see larva, then I know the queen's in the top. Another little blast of smoke. Yeah. You okay, Marshall? I'm being buzzed. <laughs> Your camera work is getting a little shaky. Okay, so maybe you want to uh, stand back. I was going to say, put your gloves on. Oh, okay. You haven't been stung yet, though, have you? Nope. Okay, this is a really docile quality. So I only wear this for protection because I got stung in the face once, and it was pretty, uh, pretty horrible looking. All right, I am going to assume the queen is in the top. I've gone through half this box. I'm over here now. And it's all... This pre presents a problem because I really want to put them back in the bottom and I wasn't planning on doing that today. Sorry, I got to go around here. Okay. Well, this is the wonderful world of beekeeping. You can run into all kinds of interesting things. <laughs> Showing connection problems. Looks like it's connected again. Okay. So this is going to actually be a much more challenging situation here because I want the queen to be in the bottom. I want the brood to be in the bottom. So what I'm going to end up doing is transferring cells from one box to the other in order to put the brood cells in the bottom and the honey cells in the top. Not what I plan to do today, but it's what we're going to do. So here, you go ahead and hold that. And now we both have gloves on so the cameraman doesn't have to be afraid.
and okay what I'm going to do then is pull a couple of these out and put them on the hanger I think I can fit three on here safely I'm also going to clean off the tops a little bit And I'm going to slide all of them over so every one of them is loose. So when I go to start transferring, it would be a, a pretty fast process. The last thing I want to do here is harm my mother, my queen, the queen bee. Generally, I'll separate the propolis from the wax, but I haven't really done much with any of it yet. I haven't made any candles or any lip balm or soap. Do you want me to do any smoking? Nope. Nope, okay. Nope, they're gonna continue to be this active. Okay. Because at this point, I've torn open the entire hive a lot more than I expected to. I was hoping to just pull two cells out of here, and instead we found that there's literally nothing but honey in the bottom. Huh. And so that's not what we want. We want our brood to be on the bottom and our feed and pollen to be on top. That's why we exclude the queen and keep her in the bottom. And That's why that mess is there. Uh -huh. and that should have been my first clue. I wasn't sure what that was about. Now I'm, now I'm quite certain because there's absolutely zero brood in the bottom of this box. So hopefully the wind will continue to die down a little bit. It has calmed down some. Certainly not the ideal situation for working on this hive today. But now that we're open, now that we've traumatized them and stressed them out, we're going to continue with the process until it's done. So... There is one other possibility, and that is that there is no queen. And if that's the case, then We'll have to go to a whole nother plan. Um, what sometimes when you find a hive like this that's full of honey and top and bottom, it's because you've lost your queen. You have no queen, they had no viable larva. In which case we'll switch to a completely different plan today. Would that be plan B? That would be plan C. Because <laughs> I've already I've already realized that that's another option that we might have here. So previously I Planned on doing something with these bees here other than putting them into the compost pile, but that's where they're going to go now. Yeah, they've literally clogged this up with dead bodies. So I don't know exactly what we got here, but we will know in a few minutes. I've got one bee that likes me a lot. Yeah, I've got two or three on me right now. <laughs> They're really not happy with us right now. I don't blame them in any way whatsoever. So what I'm gonna do right now is open this one up and start searching for brood. And hopefully we'll find stuff. If we don't, then we know we have a problem with our hive and we'll actually have to requeen this hive. And we're about to find out. out of the way.
Yeah, it's really hard to smoke in the wind. The wind's just deleting the smoke. All right, hopefully there's some larva on this. I see pollen and honey. So yeah, that's gonna be the case. I am quite certain that I have a queenless colony. What will happen is if a queen leaves and they're unsuccessful at creating a new queen, they will do nothing but honey production. Okay, and just to be sure, that's larva. Yay! So we've got larva on top. So now we're going to start looking for our queen as we transfer these carefully from this box into the other box. And I'm going to be pulling these ones which we know are not full of larva and putting them in the top. Yeah, this is all larva. And after this one, I am going to have to re-smoke. They're really upset and I don't want them doing any damage to themselves. This is so heavy. This is so full of honey. It is truly amazing how heavy this one is. If I were to guess, I would say it's five pounds. Wow. But that's just a guess. Okay, so I still haven't seen our queen. I am going to restart my smoker. hopefully with no bees on me this time. You can use leaves and twigs and pretty much anything you want. I've just had my most success with this burlap and it's fairly simple to use. You can basically take a old burlap sack, leave it out in the weather or spray it with some water and let it dis deteriorate a little bit and it becomes this and it's easier to work with. Here we go. Get that glove back on. One of the great things about being a beekeeper is when somebody asks you, you know, why do you have a lighter? You can say, I'm a beekeeper. I needed to use it for smoking. <laughs> well, I don't smoke, so I guess I'm going to have to start. <laughs> Marshall's a comedian. Uh -huh. Well, all right. Not professionally. These bees are not happy. <laughs> and the wind is absolutely not cooperating with us today. I'm a little concerned for the safety of my queen. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing.
Were you transferring in the other direction? I'm transferring both directions. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Yes. Oh, that's right. You're putting the I'm putting the honey in the, the top. The honey and pollen in the top. And the brood in the bottom. And the brood is going to the bottom. So these girls are really quite upset. Just gently move the tool around and they will move out of the way. The slower you move, the better it is for everyone involved, including the apiarist. Yeah, so this is all brood. Here you can see freshly laid brood. See those little white dots in the bottom there? So oh, they yeah. haven't even been capped. Those oh, are yeah. still being fed royal jelly. We're gonna take this one right here and we're gonna put it in this one here because this could possibly be the source of a new queen for our new nuke. Yay. So we're gonna continue on plan A, even though we've switched all the way to plan C. I'm just gonna slowly, see how that, they just, they move out of the way if you're slow with them. You don't need to crush anybody, you don't need to kill anybody. So I'm still looking to see if I see my queen. I don't. Look on the back. They're, there's normally a I would, them on the back on the corner. Normally, she's really usually quite excellent at hiding. Uh huh. So um, you watch for a while, you'll see her. I see a couple of little albino bees. Now, normally, when I go in to do an inspection, I will clean these up a little bit. Right now, I'm, I'm kind of concerned about the wind. I'm not so worried about cleaning this, these up as much as I would normally. A lot of times I just want to, you know, scrape off this excess propolis and wax. Give the bees a chance to get away from it. This is probably more wax than propolis, so I'm going to put it in that container. And we'll just keep moving on. Take out some more of this propolis here. Okay, let's take another one of these. Now this one's super light, super light. So I'm actually gonna take this, I'm gonna put it over here in this box. So I've got two cells, one that's got a lot of brood on it, one that doesn't have a whole lot of brood. Right now, I'm going to seal that up. Let's just keep moving, honey. Pun intended. Ha ha. Ha ha. Okay, sweetie. You look out, baby. Just move out of the way, honey. Come on. Regardless of how careful I am, there's going to be some victims, but I want to minimize it. I'm not, I'm not a selfish jerk, and I'm not going to use any political references here. <laughs> okay. Lots of good brood on this one. Still haven't seen a queen. Just keep moving on. Hopefully she's in one of these last two groups. And it's really thick. I don't know if the camera's picking that up, how well it's picking it up. I know this is only 720. But there are a ton of bees on here, and I'm thinking that they're here for a reason, and that would be to protect their mommy. This is full of honey. And there is some 
brood on it as well. Oh, it said low battery. That's okay. Okay. We're just about done here. So we've got some things in that box that should hopefully produce a queen. I want to put this one in there as well. So if you can lift that box open and go ahead, I'll get it. I want to pull the feeder out. Okay. Grab that. Okay. And then now, and there's also a lot of bees in there. So I'm going to seal this up. This should be what we need to start a colony. I'm going to move this down here onto a better surface area now that it's full. Okay. Well, let's move the last one in here. Okay. Hopefully. A lot of bees on it. Hopefully there's a queen in here. Hopefully she stays with this frame. So one lesson that's come out of this whole process here is that you want to inspect your hives on a regular basis. Oh, I see her right here on this side. And with that, I don't, I don't care that you guys aren't getting to see her. She's going in the box. Did you, did, did you see her? I did not. Oh, okay. I but thought you it, saw, you saw a larger, a longer body. Yeah. That's it. And there she is. I see her right now and I'm happy with this process. I'm actually going to slide in. Um, where are our new frames? So these are pre-wax plastic based frames. And I'm going to go ahead and put two new ones in here to replace the two I took out. I really, I smashed one or two there and the release of pheromones when I did that really upset someone oh, wow. so much that they stung me. Look at that. And unfortunately she's going to lose her life for that. Not my intention, sorry. So I actually crushed somebody right there. I'm going to clean this up a little bit more, not too much more. And then this is going to go on top here. I'm gonna give this a good smoking. Hopefully this is still burning. Wow, right then the wind picks up. Ah, of course. Okay, so now, This box is going to go back on top of there. At this point, I'm more concerned about losing heat to this hive. So if a couple of girls oh, get crushed, I feel bad. The frame holder, do you want that off? I see. Put these frames in. And I'm kind of becoming impatient, which isn't a good thing. But they're upset. They've been exposed a little too long. I know I have the queen in the bottom there now. So that's probably the last little cleanup I'm going to do. And I might clean this one too. Huh? They, they're upset. Since it's normally such a docile colony, I really want to get it closed back up and not upset them anymore. So I'm going to add two more frames to that one. For the two I took out of the top. And 
And then our inner lid. Okay, this is gonna be beautiful. Look at all these bees I got on this inner lid. So you know what I'm gonna do with these? Inspect real quick. And then, hopefully the wind will cooperate with me here for a minute. Huh. So I got as many bees as I possibly could into that nuke box. Yay. That will give that box a chance. And if you look, there's a plug in it right now. So they cannot escape. That's your extra wax that you keep around? Yeah. This is just extra, oh, this is just extra stuff. There's actually processes for separating wax from undesirable things. I'm not too worried about doing right now. I just want to get the extra off of here so the next time I go into inspect it, it's not going to be sealed quite as tightly as it was this time. And I'm going to gently put this lid on, giving them time to move out of the way. And again, with these holes in the front, I'm going to put this lid on in such a way that they are able to get out the top and go into the bottom. Remove my holder off of there. Now this is slid forward. And I'll show you, this is about the size of a girl and it will slip up in there. So if by any chance the queen is in the top right now, she mm. should be able to come out of the top and move to the bottom. Ah. Hopefully she'll do that and go where she, she her brood is. Hopefully she's already in the bottom. So that was kind of a messy deal today. And my apologies that it didn't go as smoothly as I had hoped, but we succeeded in hopefully moving all the larva to the bottom and getting the queen back in the bottom and we've started a new nuke and that that was the goal of the day of course the wind will probably calm down now yeah it's gonna be calm so for right now i want this to stay nice and warm i'm actually going to put it right up on top it's not open so none of the bees that are inside here can leave everything that's in here is going to stay in here and in a day or two i'll remove them unfortunately a few of our girls gave up their lives for this operation. For that I apologize, but the hive is in better shape for it. I am not going to try to salvage any of this, and I'm also not concerned that there's any parasites in it. I don't see any. You would see shiny little things moving if you had Varroa mites, and there I see one. It's right there. Oh, I can see it, but I'm... It's either, a, either that or it's an ant. Well, it's going to go into the compost pile anyway. Normally, I don't put this in the compost pile. Normally, I pour hot water over it if I have any concerns. So right now, I'm going to flip it over so that I get a good inspection the next time, and I'll do a, a more thorough job of cleaning it next time I take it out. I highly recommend this type of a hive. Don't know the name of it right now. There is a label on the back side, so I can look at that. Countrybees.com. So you saw that it was a little warped, and what I'm going to do is I'm actually opening up the back side. To press it down to get it to slide all the way through. And then I'm going to seal the back side up. 
and I will seal the front side up. And that is how an amateur apiarist splits a hive. So we encountered a couple of different difficulties today with it, mainly the wind, but also discovering that the hive was in reverse. And uh, that happened when the queen excluder got put in the last time she was on top. So it basically forced them to switch their whole system of keeping the honey and the pollen on the bottom and having the brood on top. It didn't serve the hive well. As you saw, there was a ton of bees that died in the top side. Normally those bees died and they, they just get pushed out. You know, it, it reminds me of uh, Monty Python's uh, meaning bring, of life. Bring out bring your, your dead. dead, yeah. So um, now they will be able to bring out their dead. Hopefully mama will be able to lay more eggs. And if for any reason there isn't a queen in here, there is brood and they can feed that brood royal jelly and make a new queen and then that's hopefully the same thing they're going to do with this box which is now on top and i want this to stay up here for as much warmth as i can get in the remaining sunlight today um, we don't want to drop the temperature of the hive so low that they have to expend a ton of energy to get it hot warm again so that's why we would prefer not to do this on a cold day and i think i think we're going to be okay here so we're going to look for a queen in this box within the next two weeks. And we're going to re-inspect this within two weeks just to see how things are going because regular inspections are, are a good thing. I'm gonna go ahead and take my gloves off now. I'm gonna steal the camera from Marshall. And there's Marshall. And it looks like it's still filming. So I'm gonna cruise by some of my plants and stuff that I have here. I'm not taking time to describe any of them. But if we go over to the side yard here, this is where I originally started keeping bees until I realized that they needed to be in the sun during the winter time. My logic was that this overhang would protect the hive from uh, poor weather, but it, it didn't do all that well. So, I just had this box sitting over here and a colony flew in and you can see that there is a colony in here that is thriving uh, right there. I wish I had a light to shine on it, but it's literally a peekaboo into the cells. So it's quite all right, Marshall, we don't need to. And they're doing well for one reason is this is full of honey that I stole from that other colony. And so these guys have had a steady supply of honey the whole time since they've got here. This has got a queen excluder in it. And I know that the queen is in the bottom of this one here. Uh, when it's not windy, I will go in and inspect this hive. I also want to replace this box because this is a custom box for capturing uh, colonies out of walls of houses or uh, a stump of a tree or something like that. It hooks up to a vacuum and you can actually suck the bees out of a wall with it. Uh, there's buckets that can be purchased online for anywhere from 50 to a couple hundred dollars. Uh, this is a design I made myself just using some old boxes that I got from a neighbor, my mentor. So I wanna thank Marshall for helping me film today. I hope the stream came through uh, decently. Sorry I've not been responding to chat at all here on Twitch, but I obviously had my hands full. Hope you enjoyed this and I will transfer this to YouTube. Have a great day everybody. For now the bees and the rider are out.